Hello folks, it's Rob Grover, Trempeleau County's Economic Development and Tourism Coordinator, and we're having another edition of Discover Trempeleau County. Uh, Discover Trempeleau County, the show where we explore the, the highways and the byways, the interesting people, places, and things that make Trempeleau County such a, a special place to live, work, and play. And today we're at a awesome location, Temba Ridge Winery. Uh, Temba Ridge Winery right out here in sort of rural Blair, rural Ettrick area. Um, an incredible place to, to try some really great wines. Um, we'll also explore their event center. We'll see how some of the wine is made and we'll meet the, the incredible people that make Temba Ridge Winery such a neat place. So again, this is Discover Trempeleau County and let's go discover Temba Ridge Winery. All right, folks, we're here at Temba Ridge Winery um, on Joe Cooley Road, kind of out in rural Blair. I'm Rob Grover, Trempeleau County's Economic Development and Tourism Coordinator. And again, we're, we're recording another edition of Discover Trempeleau County. Um, and again, at Temba Ridge Winery, beautiful place. And we're joined by one of the owners, Kim Sella. Hi, Kim. Hello. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Oh, good. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having us out here. It's such a, a beautiful place and a, and a beautiful day. And I know you are someone, your whole family are people who are always busy. So we really appreciate you taking some time to talk with us. Well, thank you. I appreciate you making the time to come and say, Temba, will you talk to me? Yeah, exactly. So to start with, you know, tell us a little bit about Temba. What, what's the history? Um, you know, where does the name come from? Kind of just how did, how did Temba Ridge Winery get its start? It started in 2015 for John and myself. That's when our journey started. Mm -hmm. uh, we purchased from John Gill. He had started this in 2004. And we had come up here quite a few times just for a date Sunday when John would get back with traveling. Mm -hmm. um, found the interest of making wine. I volunteered John for the job and it kind of went from there. So one thing led to the next and we've just grown and grown and grown since that time. Yeah, and it is incredible because you, when you say you've grown, you're not kidding. I mean, it, from what it was just a few years ago uh, to what it is today, talk a little bit about that growth. I mean, what, um, and we're, we're going to go all around the property here and look at some different things, but um, I guess what was it when, when you guys um, got, got, you know, got ownership and how have you grown it? Okay, so when we purchased, it was a four-person tasting bar. Um, it was on the other side of where we're speaking right now. Uh, it had one bathroom. It actually had a shower in it. It was in the basement of a house. So we have added this whole area on. Um, we've done uh, the barn area, which we call our event center. We have probably done about six additions since we purchased in 2015. Um, we've done the barn area at least three, four times, just adding a little bit more. This part, um, just doing concrete, doing uh, landscaping, doing the parking lots, all of that. Uh, warehouse, obviously that went back up um, after fire a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. so that was another building. And now we're working on a production facility hoping to start in the spring. Wow, that's incredible. And you know, this is a just, so this is the main tasting room and it's just, just gorgeous in here. How many wines do you guys produce? We have about 45, 50 
that's usually on the menu at one time. We're known for our country wines, which are your sweeties, which everybody just absolutely loves them. But we also have our red wines, our select grape. We have bourbon wines, which are amazing as well. Um, reds, whites, something that is gonna suit for everyone. Yeah. Well, okay, now stepping back a little bit. So you guys took over in 2015 and, you know, taking on uh, uh, an existing business and, and especially something in the hospitality industry like this, I mean, what, was it a huge learning curve? Did you have any background in, in kind of the hospitality business? I mean, that, what a huge leap of faith to jump into something like that. And obviously it's been incredibly successful. I mean, I would tell you most, most any night Saturday when it's nice weather, when I come up to visit this place, hard to find a parking spot. But right. you know, what, what was that like saying, you know what, John, your husband, let's do this, Let, let's hop in. I mean, it must've been a little terrifying, I would think. <laughs> it was. Yeah. So John was um, construction, he worked for Lunda, he traveled quite a bit, so he was a cement finisher. Um, I worked in long-term care, and I kept that position for a while when we first started here. Obviously, when you do your own business and stuff like that, it's a big scare of going, okay, I just want this solely as a business and not have another job. It got to the point where we had to just solely put our time in here. Uh, so when John started, he basically um, was doing some maintenance around outside, uh, did some lawn care, and then he started helping John Gill. John Gill was getting older, he needed some help, and at that time he probably only had maybe 16 wines, 14, 16 wines, sometimes only eight on the menu. Um, so John Gill started teaching my John how to do, and it gets very confusing because yes, you have a John and a John, the two and they're Johns, like, okay, yep. what's going on here? Um, so he stayed with us for quite some time. So he was our mentor. It was yeah. teaching us everything about it as yeah. far as this is how you make the wine. This is how you sample. This is how you, you experience wine tasting, and this is how you share it with others. So it's been really fun. Oh, I bet. Incredible. Cool. Okay, so now we come up to Temba. We want to do a wine tasting. How does that usually work? What, what are the different options you offer? You know, I know you can buy it by the bottle. You can buy it by the glass. But, you know, yeah, if you want to do a tasting, how does that usually work? It's changed. It has changed since we started. Um, just because of the COVID situation, mm -hmm. we used to do the glass that we would give the glass and we would show the whole lesson and everything. Now we actually have um, something like our tasting boards right now. Uh -huh. So we would go ahead and set these up and we do five for five and they're little glasses that go around. We give you a water, um, something like this. We put crackers on here. Um, they pick off the menu whatever that they would want to taste and we would line it up in the order that we want them to taste their wine or what we would say how to recommend them to taste it. Mm -hmm. Obviously we can, we're not going to be the wine snob or the wine connoisseur. Mm -hmm. Um, we want people to drink their wine the way they like it. So, you know, if they prefer to put ice in their wine, yep. okay, you know, that's not exactly what we want you to do. But if that's how you prefer it, well, then have at her, mm -hmm. you know, go ahead. Um, so they can go ahead with this and then they can take it out anywhere on, you know, on the outside, inside and sample their wine, come back in, and then we can give them more information. I would say that our staff is so, so great. Mm -hmm. um, we are so fortunate that everyone is taught how to do these tastings. They know the wine. They know um, the order they're supposed to go. They should be able to find the wine that someone wants. Mm -hmm. So if someone comes in here and says, I like sweet or I like a dry, they should be able to push them in the right direction and say, here, go ahead and try this. Yeah. That's interesting, you know, and um, you talk a lot there about educating people about the wines. It's been fascinating in a place like Trempolo County, which I would say 25 years ago, there wasn't much of a wine culture, if you will. I mean, people drank wine, but, you know, there weren't really wineries here, right? right. And to see how we have built such a wine culture in this area now, and people have their favorites. And, you know, a lot of that must, you know, the, the ability to, to have... Um, grapes that grow in this area that have been developed and that sort of thing. We really have gone, I mean, it's still very much a beer culture, but it must have been very interesting to see that wine culture develop and to be a piece of that in our area that's helped kind of bring that in. Absolutely. 
Uh, what we've also noticed is uh, younger crowds mm. have started um, to come. So it's not just a 21st birthday or 22, 25 years old. Um, they're coming here to experience wine tasting, mm -hmm. which you normally would not have known, let's say, 15 years ago. Yeah. Um, but we have that that clients, um, members, customers from young to 60, 70. Yesterday, 94 years old wow. came up here to experience the beauty up here, which is, it's just great. The other part I can say is it's not just about 10, but when people come up here. Yeah, this is great. I mean, it's the tourism, exactly what you're talking about, right? So when a person comes in this area, we want to be able to share things with them got different wineries in the area. Which direction are you going? North, south, east, west? Beer, yes, mm -hmm. great breweries in the area. Go check them out. And that is another thing that we would carry to is beer for the person that doesn't like wine. I was gonna mention that you do have a, a, a pretty big uh, beer list. I'm just looking at it over on the chalkboard over there and I'm sure the gentleman will, will get a shot of it. You offer a lot of beers and you also offer a good selection of, of locally sourced beers as well. Yes, we do. So Sand Creek, we carry a lot of the Sand Creek. We work with- Black River Falls. Black River yep. Falls, yep, they work just with what, us. Just what, 10? 50, 20 minute drive from here, roughly? Everything from here is 20, 20, 25 20, minutes. 20, 25 minutes, yeah. Yep, we're out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Um, but it's worth the drive coming out this direction. Oh, yeah. So even if you decide that it's not beer or wine, well, then guess what? We have the slushies. That's right. The slushies. Oh, they're so good. You have your wine slush. Yeah, they are delicious. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So slushies, pair that with a pizza or a pretzel or anything like that and make a day of it. And by the way, your pretzels are incredible. They're big. Yeah, the big nope. Bavar Bavarian pretzels. Bavarian That's pretzels, right. all the dips with it. Uh, we do tell everybody there's no carbs in it whatsoever. Ah, there you go. No. Exactly. None. The wine takes care of the carbs, right? <laughs> I don't know about There that. you go. That's funny. So I want to talk a little bit about um, this beautiful painting yeah. you have up here. Yeah. And uh, folks will notice on your bottles that you, you have that image on, on all your different wines. And how many wines do you say? 20-some different kinds that uh, you got? We're probably in that 50. Oh, my gosh. 50. Sorry. I, okay. Yep. 50. Yep. That's, that's incredible, so by the way. When we and they're not all, some are seasonal, obviously. Some of them are. It, yeah. it kind of depends, though, too, when we take a beating on one wine sure. versus another. Yep. Um, obviously, it's really hard to have all these wines on the menu at the same sure. time. Sure. Just because it's a full tasting rail that's mm -hmm. here. Um, so we try to change it up a little bit. Okay. A little bit. And then on all your bottles, that incredible painting. I, and I understand there's a little bit of a story behind that. There I, is. I, folks would probably love to know about that. Yes. So when people say, I really like, you know, the one bottle of wine that you have and it's got the lady on it. Well, <laughs> yeah. yes, every single bottle is the same. Yeah. It's just the name. So this picture is called uh, the Grape Stompers. And if you look at the picture, there is actually one, two, three, four ladies stomping on grapes. Uh, John Gill's daughter, Anne, this was her vision, and she painted this. And this is what she came up with. She was undergoing cancer treatments when she painted this part, and this is her vision. Wow. Um, it's kind of the history. Grape Stompers, Timber Ridge Winery. Uh, Tenba means flying horse in Japanese. Oh, really? So Interesting. It kind of ties together because we have the old barn mm -hmm. that when we first purchased, um, there was just a, one part of a wall mm -hmm. that was there. Um, the original barn was beautiful. That ended up going down, and we built the foundation off the old part. So when people are going Timber Ridge, we always associate that picture with the name. Yeah. Um, but how that flying horse came on is the original um, owner, John Gill, and his wife, Kyoko, she had a love of horses. And these were old retired racehorses and they stabled in the barn and they ran wild through here. Oh, wow. So flying horse in yeah. Japanese, that's what Temba means. The vision, flying horse and grape stompers. Wow, incredible. So Kim, in a little bit, we're gonna go look at some of the outdoor space. You got incredible views, just spectacular and great places to just chill out outside. But you guys are open all year round. And in the winter months, this is obviously where you operate out of. And, and you know, I, I've been up here in the winter as well. It's it's so, it just is so nice and cozy up here, kind of tucked in, tucked in the woods, if you will. You always have it plowed out nice. Um, but yeah, you're, you're open all year, correct? We are. So we just opened up on Thursday starting this year from 4 to 7. And we're going to keep those hours May through October. 
Um, and then our normal hours are just Friday, Saturday, and Sunday from noon until 7. So when you look at the fall of the year, which we're going to be getting into the peak season here with color, um, there's nothing to sneeze at either when you have the winter storm that rolls through. And yeah. it, is, it is absolutely gorgeous. There isn't a season that isn't ugly. Oh, that, that is really true. Any time of year here in Trumpelow County is just a great time to be here. We're fortunate. Exactly. And I love that you've got the fireplace over there. Yeah. I mean, I, I, like I say, I love coming here in the winter. It's just so cozy to still be able to chill out and drink wine. You put some mulled wines on, get that smell all going, get it nice and toasty. And yeah, everybody's got rosy cheeks by the time they drink. There you go. Wine, right? So, okay, you've got a couple, uh, some barrels that were out ahead here. So yeah. what, what's going on there? Okay, those barrels are actually the original seating of how the... Uh, the original owner, John Gill, had set up. So um, they're aging tanks. Um, they're just sitting there waiting to be bottled. Um, oh. These take a little bit more time because it's a very slow process of just bottling out of these carboys. Mm -hmm. um, so they've been sitting there for a while. Um, what you'd see when you come, there is certain areas that you sit on these expensive barrels. The rest of them are in bigger fermenters in the back. Oh, wow. So we've kept the original way of some of how the previous owner did. That is so cool. And I think maybe you're going to be doing some bottling of yes. those later. So yes. maybe we'll be able to catch that at yep. some point. That'd yep. be really cool. So now, are we able to go back and look at some of the production area back there? I would, and think, I would think so. Cool. Yes. So yep. well, maybe we'll pop back there and just take a little look and yep. you can explain a little bit of the process to us. That sounds real good. Awesome. I will probably have my son Cole do a lot of that. He is winemaker along with John at this point. Um, and you know, it, yeah, it really is a family operation here. Yeah, your it husband and, and your two sons. Yep, and Bryce also. He's our assistant PR manager, uh, the gift to Gab also. Yes. Um, anybody that comes up here, Bryce is going to definitely engage them in an Uno game. Yes. Um, Not to get too personal, but I know Bryce is sort of your, your miracle son as well. He is. Yeah. So, you know what, be thankful for what you have and what yeah. you don't have. And obviously, this has been one thing that has expanded and changed our life. For Bryce, this is his life. This is what he enjoys. Obviously, with Cole, we're looking at that he wants to really engage in this business and take over at some yeah. point in time. And, you and know, now Cole recently, not too long ago, got back from the service, I believe. He did. He yeah. was deployed in Afghanistan for 13 mm. months. He wow. got back last uh, August. Very, very fortunate that he is home now. Oh, yeah. Um, we're very blessed that he's home, and we just want to make sure the rest of our troops get home safely. Oh, We're no thinking doubt. about him all the time. I think we all are right now. Yeah. We can just tell how passionate you are and how, how much this is a family operation when you talk about it, which is just really neat to see. Um, yeah. Yes. We don't get along all the time. Oh. But, you know, you you live together, you, you, yep. you work together and everything else. Uh. But it is, we do have the growing pains with it. Yeah. And if you, you know, you just got to go day by day. Yeah. Well, let's uh, let's take a little look in the back and we'll see what's going on there. Okay. That sounds real good. So we've we've moved from the main tasting room, which again is just a, a gorgeous space, and now we're here in what uh, you call the production room, where really where the magic happens, yes. where you guys are, are making the wine, where you're fermenting the wine, uh, you know your fifty some different wines, um, and and to be honest, what strikes me, so with all the different varieties of wine you make, and and how many bottles do you guys you think you make a year? I mean, we tens have, of thousands, I'm sure. Oh, we're probably at thirty thousand. Thirty thousand. You do it out of this room, which this, frankly is not very big. This room. You have to love the people that you work with because this is it. This is very tight quarters. Yeah. So everything that we're not using when we're not open gets pushed out of here so we can move around in here a little bit, make your wine, and wow. yeah, it's the same production area that John Gill had. So even though we expanded wine-wise and area-wise and everything else, we're still working on the same room that he worked wow, with. Wow, that's crazy. <laughs> so. And you talk about kind of the, the evolution for how you guys do things here. You know, you were telling me that these, what, six-gallon yeah. uh, drums here? Six-gallon carboys. They, they were the original, uh, that's what you used to ferment in. Yes. 
Wow. So they used to sit uh, all the way around here. Actually, we had glass ones. And um, they that's where everything was started. We use these sometimes when we're starting a new batch of just exploring something new. Mm -hmm. um, but this is what we started with. And then we have different uh, larger containers. Um, and then we went to bigger ones. Yeah, so, you know, okay, that's, that's six gallons. How many gallons are we talking? And these are full, you said, of wine right now. These are. M many these, gallons, obviously. Yep, these, yeah. are, these are all going right now. So um, these were hard to get along the way, too, you know, when you had different shipping problems and everything else. We could definitely use more of these tanks yeah. and stuff, but there's no place for us to put them. Yeah. So it is around the clock right now as far as trying to move and keep product and demand all working as best as we possibly can in the limited space that we have. So the more wholesale that we're doing and everything else, it's like that could be a really, it could be a crapshoot because if you're saying, yes, we're gonna do wholesale, but we don't have enough for people to come out here and enjoy this view mm -hmm. and stay here, you know, that it wouldn't be good either. Yeah. So the production facility is definitely needed. Oh, you bet. And like you said, that is, so you, the, the plans are there to do that. You know, the, the timeline on that is still up in the air a little bit. But once you get that production facility built, you said, you know, maybe 30,000 bottles a year is what you're doing now. What do you think, if you wanted to, what do you think you could have the capacity be up to? Well, and obviously, depending on the market and everything else, you know. If I ask my son and uh, John, they're still the only two, like, winemakers. Cole yep. is taking over a lot of that right now. So we'd have to get a few more people on staff. Yeah. I mean, if we have 15 employees right now, that is what's doing the serving and everything else of two winemakers or you know basically that's that's it yeah um i don't know i could see that we could get things a little bit easier because if we wouldn't do them in smaller batches we might escalate that a little bit more mm -hmm. we're a small winery we, yeah. we are Thirty thousand is nothing to sneeze at but we're still a small winery and something kind of neat, um, and I'm sure they'll get it on camera, you actually can see on the top of some of these barrels the, the fermenting happen. The little and bubblers. The yeah. little bubblers. And, and that what? That is, like, what? what is the chemical coming up through? Is, is that? Know, your, your carbon. Yep. Yep. Very cool. Like I said, I'm sure they'll get a shot of that. But, um, yeah. So uh, so right now, how many different wines do you think are, are in you know, being fermented in, in, in the production area here. Uh, what do we have? One, two, three, four. These are all your country wines over here because we have our different tanks, which is going to represent what is what. Mm -hmm. um, those are all full as well. Uh, Cole usually has a spreadsheet. So we have what? One, uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Probably about 15, 16 wow. different wines going on, but it all depends on what stages they're mm -hmm. in as well. So, you know, you might have a phase one to two, three, and these guys move their wines in and take care of them as need be. Yeah. Okay, so from, and I guess, I, I assume it depends on wine, but from like when you start the process, you know, when, you, when, you've, when you've got the juice, um, to when the wine might be ready to serve. I mean, how, how long of a process is that to ferment it, to produce it, um, bottle it, all of that? Uh, days, weeks, months? I... Well, it'd be at least a month if you do some of your country wines. Mm -hmm. Those are easy to turn around. Uh, your red wines, you can let them sit and age and age. And it, it, the better they are is when they sit, the longer they sit. Mm -hmm. um, it also depends on some of the wines when we put them in an oak barrel versus when we move them to aging and stuff too. So um, it could be months to a long time, a yeah. long time. Wow. Um, it's just interesting to see all the different phases as well. Too. Well, again, it's just so amazing on how much you do in this little space. And also you're saying this is like where dishes get done and this yes. and that. I mean, it's, it's not just where you produce the wine. It is like the heart of kind of the operation. It is. Wow. It is, and it's nothing fantastic or beautiful sure. in here by all means but if you imagine bringing all this stuff back in when we're open mm -hmm. and then add two or three workers in here in this little area so yeah add all this stuff all these different tables back in here 
That's amazing. Well, this is neat to see. I think we're gonna go back out into the tasting room area where you're doing kind of a more traditional old school bottling and we're gonna get to see some of that. Sounds good. We'll head back that way. Thank you. All right, Kim, so now we're back. Um, we're back out here and you know, we're kind of, we're, we're watching a little bit of um, what, it's, it's the more old school way of bottling a little bit, more of the way that um, you guys started bottling or, or it was bottled before you even took on yes. uh, Timber Ridge. So I guess explain just a little bit about what we're seeing and yeah, what's going on out here. Okay, so Cole and Drew are um, doing their bottling part. We call it our Holstein is what they're using. They can ah. do six bottles at a time. It, and it does. It looks yeah. like the, it looks like some cow teats. You're yep. right. Yeah. Um, and this is actually a graduated part of how we used to do it before. Um, so how we used to do it before would just be one bottle at a time. And they're not doing it at this point right now. They're just, they're doing six. They'll ah. fill up. Um, they got to watch how everything comes through one of those kegs that you can see that yep. is on there. Sure. So this is kind of an example of what they would be doing back out in production area. Oh wow. Um, so they are doing some red, uh, red wines right now. So yep. they're going to be in the dark bottle. So um, okay, they just pulled those bottles off. Those are full now. Those are full. Okay. So it is all uh, registered as far so they'll all be filled exactly the same. Cole's gonna put a light here on this bottling part too. So sometimes when we're doing it by hand, one bottle at a time, you can't tell where that, that wine actually is. It's a little bit harder oh. um, to see where the wine is. Now explain this, is it preset to yep. stop? It, yep. it knows just how, how much to fill and then it stops. Yep. Now sometimes, you know, it, you have glitches with anything, Yep. Um, but it'll fill all of these. Now when they get going, um, cause they're doing two, four, six, eight, they're doing nine different kinds of wine right now, which we are all out of on all of wow. these after this weekend. Um, but what they're doing is they're gonna, they, they get on a roll, Drew, Drew is filling everything up and then Cole's going to turn around and he's going to cork one bottle at a time. Wow, how um, time <laughs> intensive and how old school is that? It is. You get done with that. So Cole's going to do the, the corking and then right on that part too, then he's going to label it. So we oh, touch wow. each bottle probably at least eight times before someone actually gets that from from production part, the start of everything to the time that they enjoy it on their table. That's incredible. Yeah, it's. Uh, I don't think most people would realize. And again, like you said, you guys aren't a huge winery. I mean, I, I think at 30,000 bottles a year, and I think, oh my gosh, that's huge. Yep. Maybe relative to some, it isn't. But to think of how much, like, you know, one-on-one -on -one actual person to bottle time there is, that's right. crazy. That is a lot. Wow. So, so what he's, he's doing when he bottles, Cole does the corking and then they are, Drew might do the corking and then Cole's gonna go ahead and get the label on the bottle. Yep. Um, then they put everything in the cases right there. They label everything up on front and, and back, tape it up, and then it goes down to warehouse. Wow, incredible. Incredible. Yeah, it just, it, it, it looks so old school, but sometimes the old way is the best way, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. I know you were saying, um, what, there's, what, six, how many different wines are they doing here? Uh, nine. 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 Nine different wines, and they'll do it keg by keg, basically, yep. right? And yep. then they'll switch it over, um, and obviously you've got different labels for each one, and you actually have the, you do the labels in-house here. You I do. design them, and you, you print them off, and all I of do. that. Yeah, which I'm sure is nice. It gives you the ability to switch things up pretty quick. We can. Um, it's a little, little time consuming, but yeah. we can make special labels for different functions and everything else too, which is kind of neat for, let's say, a wedding or an anniversary or a reunion. Mm -hmm. Super cool. So then, in one of these metal kegs, which they got a shot of earlier, how many bottles of wine do you think are probably in one of those? About six and a half cases in a keg. Six and a half cases in a keg. Wow. Pretty cool. About 28 cases in the wow. bigger, the bigger fermenters. Uh, pretty incredible. Very cool. And will they? They'll get through all of these this afternoon. They'll oh, they'll gosh, do them yes. all. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. 
Wow, that's incredible. Now you mentioned these wines that you're bottling here, you're out of them right now. Yep. And a big reason of that is you had an incredible event over we the did. weekend. And I think what we're gonna do next is we're gonna head outside, we'll look at some of the outside space that you have up here in the tasting room area, and then we're gonna check out your spectacular special events area. And it, it spectacular doesn't do it justice. It's pretty darn awesome, so. It is pretty neat. Yeah. Yes. Well, let's, um, yeah, let's head outside. Okay. All right, so now we're, we're out of the main tasting room and we're, we're just right outside the doors actually and uh, out in some of your gorgeous outdoor space that you have for people to enjoy. And, and it really is gorgeous. Um, you've got incredible views of the valley up ahead. And so what's the name of the valley up there? Or is it just kind of all Joe Cooley Road you get to? Maybe, maybe there's not a formal name of the valley down there. We call it High Peak. High Peak. That is High Peak. Oh, right okay. So where you'd be looking at where the V part yep, is, yep. that would be Hegg. Oh, you bet the, the Tremplow County uh, metropolis yep. of Hegg, right? Yep. That Galesville. <laughs> Winona area, La Crosse area. Oh, wow. Over there, you get to the upper deck, you get beyond these trees, and you can see like the five different towers, and it's miles. That's incredible. This is what people come to see. It's not just about the wine. Mm -hmm. It is about the wine. Yep. But it's not about the wine, it's about the view. Yeah, incredible. And like I say, you have tons of outdoor space here. You know, probably do. looks like a couple dozen tables just down here. Yes. And that must have been so useful too during the pandemic, of course, which we're still in, but when we were really in the height of it and the nervousness about it, to have this incredible ability to yes. have people spread out outside. And even now, if you're still nervous about it, you've got incredible opportunities to still come here, enjoy the incredible wine, the views, and still kind of be at your own safety level, whatever you kind of feel. Absolutely. Even just adding a few things on with the, the roof part. Mm -hmm. um, when it rained, they got rained on from down from the upper part of the deck. So the pandemic actually made us think outside our box a little bit of mm -hmm. going, how can we be creative? How can we space things out? How can we add different tables around and just make people comfortable? It doesn't matter. Most people still just want to be outside anyway, even yeah. in the winter. Yeah. They'll bundle up, put a lap blanket on or whatever, sit outside. People are comfortable outside. That's really cool. So now um, you don't just have um, outdoor seating here. You guys also, you know, you grow pumpkins and you do some other things. Um, tell us a little bit about some of that. The pumpkins, yes. yes. We, John actually did it this year here. We used to have a pumpkin day back at the house part where we do a free will donation. We did that for nine years. We wanted to do a 10th year. Um, we might do that next year. Or we might sneak it in this year. I don't know. Yeah. But the pumpkin patch is up on top of the hill. That's what we picked everything with the pumpkins in the gourds to do fall harvest this last week. Um, the, the corn up there, like I told you a little bit earlier, I'd want to do a corn maze, a Polish corn maze. <laughs> I love Make it. Make it a circle and have a yep. wine tasting go up on top of the hill. I, sounds great to me. Yeah, I don't know if they'll let me do that. Yeah, just do it, right? <laughs> right. That's funny. I love it, yeah. Um, and, you know, I have to say, too, it's incredible how much beautifully landscaped and mowed area you have. Yes. And we were talking about it off screen. How long does it take to actually mow all this beautiful land that you, again, that you have landscaped here? John spends a day, and wow. that's pretty much with the mowing that he does. That doesn't include the weed whipping and the extra care around um, the landscaping part, too. I mean, it's it's just... It's gorgeous. Yeah. But it does take time. 
Oh, I bet. And, and that's, that's you guys doing it. I mean, yes. you guys are doing that work. Yes. We always say that the, we don't expect anyone that works here or whatever to do anything that we don't do. So it is a family-owned business. We do it all. The hand that pours the wine also scrubs the toilets and mows the lawn and mm -hmm. everything else. Mm -hmm. So this is what we're about. We want you to come as you are. And guess what? Most of the time you're going to see us in our work clothes and everything else because this is who we are during the week. Sometimes when people come up for tasting and we're open, guess what? We're still in our work garb of off, not tasting mode, if that makes mm -hmm. any sense. Yeah. And I think I think that's one thing people probably really love about Timber Ridge is that, you know, like you said, it is a family business. You see the owners right here. And I, I many a times I've been here and you're running around greeting people, just doing the grunt work. And that that's pretty neat to see it. You're not some nameless, faceless, you know, owners living in a different state that own a winery because it's a hobby for them or this or that. I mean, this is your livelihood. It is your passion. And it's it's your what you've built for your family. Pretty cool. We work all the shifts. We work right along with all of our staff. Yeah. And I, I don't think I'd want it any other way. I'd like to take a, a few hours off in a week. That isn't really happening right now in the mm -hmm. busy season. I mean, you got done with uh, the fall harvest, so our next one will be, we got to get ready for Black Friday. That's a big that's a big yeah. thing for us. Yeah. And then just this is the time of the year that people are looking to go out and about to all these different areas and stuff just to see the colors and go for a road trip. Yeah. So, okay, one thing that's really grown for you guys is special events, you know, weddings and, and that sort of thing. Um, and you guys recently renovated or, or, or added to, I guess, your, your outdoor event center. Um, why don't we head down that way and check it out? Because it, it is a sight to see. It is. All right. Okay. All right, Kim, so now we are down here at your incredible event center, um, just gorgeous, and we're sitting out on, on the deck here. Uh, tell us a little bit about the, the event area. You know, um, you, you've done a ton of work on it over the years. Now, how did it start out, and um, yeah, what, what's going on here today? What kind of events you can do here? What kind of amenity is it, amenities does it have? All that stuff. Okay, so we do a lot of weddings. Uh, this year has been very full of weddings. Uh, we do celebrate life. We do anniversary, showers, reunions, um, just gatherings, mm -hmm. uh, class reunions, you know, things like that. Um, so we have this area that, that we're sitting on right here, the gazebo area. Some mm -hmm. people get married out on this. We'll haul tables out. Or we have a pergola area, and people will set up tables out on the landing. Uh, the inside of the facility can seat probably right around that 300. It will be kind of tight inside. Mm -hmm. um, but there's so much seating outside of the building besides. So when we had built the place, it was about 700 standing, which standing. Yep. But yep. at the same time, you know, if you look at the outside, there were so many tables that you could seat people comfortably. Even like this weekend, the outer patio was used, the outer deck was used, inside was used. People brought their lawn chairs, sat out on, on just to enjoy the day. Yeah. It can hold a lot of people. Oh, I bet. The nice part is, is if it rains, it can be covered. You can open the doors. It's an open and closed venue. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's the nice part. Yeah, it's incredible. And I know, I believe you guys um, just did some like increased insulation of it and that sort of thing. I mean, you, you really can have events here from pretty early in the spring until pretty deep into the fall. Yes, so we usually close this part down uh, the end of October. We did the insulation this last November and painting. Um, 
it is the LP is already hooked up. I do believe that we're just going to continue and just finish the heat part to keep it if we really want to open up for, let's say, a Christmas party or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure if we want to or not, just because um, when you're booked every weekend flipping um, from a wedding, let's say, because we're getting ready for a wedding uh, this weekend, and then we flip it on Sunday for a shower. So every weekend for this year, we're pretty much double booked, and we're already pretty much booked. Um, September is all booked for next year, October partially booked. Wow. They're, the spring is open, but even booking into 2023. Wow. So um, there's a lot of work that's put into this oh. place to get ready for an event. It's not just a building. It's decorated. It is it is a character. Yeah. It's already got character. It's not just the shell. Well, and you've got some incredible amenities out here as well. I mean, your, your beautiful kitchen facility that you have, um, you know, a full full kitchen, full legal kitchen, as it were. Yep. Um, you've got some awesome bathrooms. You and know, dressing with, rooms. And dressing rooms yep. and that sort of thing. Um, to me, you can really tell that you put a lot of thought when you guys were designing this building, a lot of thought into making sure it had everything it needed for someone to be comfortable, you know, for a bride and groom to be comfortable. For Absolutely. really, you, you, you've thought of it all out here. Um, it's pretty incredible. It wasn't just our thought. It was drawn up at the original part, the original piece, not addition, addition. It was drawn on a paper bag oh. with our contractor. Wow. So um, I would have to, compliment our Ernie Comprude that ah, has helped yes. on different things here. So um, he has been along on this whole journey of going, mm -hmm. well, I have some creative ideas too. So he's put a lot of heart and soul into this place as mm -hmm. well. Um, but if you're, if you're looking for chandelier, this is not your place. Sure. If you're looking for country rustic and just, just country. Yeah. And, you know, even though it's it's country, my gosh, the, the, the high-end finishes on a lot of things, the incredible landscaping. I mean, it's, it's uh, you really didn't, you didn't spare any detail. Uh, the um, landscaping is, yeah, that was the last edition, part two. It's incredible. And it, it must be a ton of work just to keep that up. Uh, that is one that, you know, John will be out here quite a bit. This is what he wants to do and stuff. Um, there is not a lot of maintenance with mm. it right at this point because sure. it has been just recently done. Yep. Um, so that was Cooley Landscape that had originally done all of that. Yep. And, of course, you know, you started looking at what our vision was, and he just made it kind of come all together. That's really incredible. And one thing I love about um, um, this facility you have here is there actually are some really neat old pieces to it as well. You know, there's, there's like a back kind of lounge seating area, which I think is like part of the original, what, 100-year-old barn or something yes. like that. But then connected to that is this building, which is very much, you know, 21st century amenities okay. and everything. So when we built this part, um, I think everybody thought we were crazy because I had said, keep that back wall. Mm -hmm. Keep the back wall and build off of it. And they're like, I don't understand why you want to do that. So the milk house... And the back wall is the original foundation, and that goes back to the history of the place. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the decorations that we put up in here, too, are history from the area. So we have brought a lot of different things from the Franklin store. I saw the old Franklin yeah. store um, yeah. sign there. Yeah. yeah. So the Franklin store is the original sign um, made out of, like, the electrical tape and on the piece of tin. The old bar on this area, we put the copper tops on top, but it is the original counter in the Franklin store. Wow. Um, where, like, my grandparents would be and stuff like that. Yeah. It's brought tears to some people's eyes of oh, going, like that. that is the bar, the counter. Um, the barber chairs, yes. You know, d a different lighting from the, the northern, northern uh, church and stuff. That's up in the upper winery. We mm -hmm. wanted to keep a lot of history, but then put your own little twist on it as yeah. well. Wow, that's really incredible. And Kim, we've we've got to see a ton of different things today. Um, you know, you mentioned how how your uh, one big project coming up is is the expanded production capabilities with the the production facilities. I guess where do you see um, 
Where do you see things going in, you know, the next five to ten years out here at Temba? I mean, you've had so much growth in the last years. Are you going to take a, a breath a little bit? Um, um, anything exciting you can announce, or I guess not announce, but but let people know? Or I guess, yeah, what, what you and John and your boys, um, you know, what, what are your plans for the next years out here at Temba Ridge? I think a person needs to know when to stop growing. And if this makes any sense at all, um, you don't want to commercialize a place even though we're a business. If we keep expanding and expanding and expanding, we're going to lose something that is very, very neat out here. Mm -hmm. So you want to still keep it comfortable. I think we want to get our production, the last of the concrete patio part finished as some of the projects of touching things up a little bit but you have to quit growing. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna be what we are right now. You get your production part and then you just sit back and enjoy and if it's if it's busy, then that's a good thing. Yeah. And you have to know when to stop. You have to enjoy what we've done. And I think that's what we're looking at in the next five years of going, okay, we've, we've done okay. This is yeah. where we stop. Yeah. Well, I tell you, I'm, I'm very grateful that you've you've taken some time with us today. Now, if people want to learn more about Timber Ridge Winery, you know, I assume you have a website, uh, social media, all that stuff. Yes, we have an Instagram. We have the Facebook, Timber Ridge, TimberRidgeWine.com. Um, we're we're open year round, yep. like we talked about and stuff. Just come and give us a holler. Come up and check the place out. That's great. I appreciate. Yeah. Hey, seriously, you're checking us out and everything else. It's um, sometimes there are some hidden gems that people don't even know that's right in their back door. That's great. Well, Kim, thank you so much for giving us this opportunity. Um, and yeah, hopefully folks will get out here and just enjoy the beautiful location, the incredible wines, and the wonderful hus hospi hospitality from <laughs> you and your family. The only difference is we haven't had a glass of wine today. I know. Gosh darn it. We'll have to fix that later, maybe. Okay. There you good. go. Thanks, Thanks so much, Kim. Thanks. Well, and there you have it, folks. Another edition of Discover Tremplo County, where today we explored the, the just beautiful Timber Ridge Winery here in, in you know, rural Blair, rural Ettrick. Um, what an incredible place. Uh, big thanks to, to Kim and, and her family for kind of letting us in and, and not, only see, not only just getting to see the incredible facility, but also kind of behind the scenes, you know, how the wine is made and that sort of thing. So please, uh, if you get a chance, come out here and visit Timber Ridge Winery. Um, and you always can learn more about Tremplo County Tourism at uh, TremploCountyTourism.com. Uh, check us out on Facebook. So again, this is Discover Tremplo County, and join us next time when we discover a new Tremplo County location. <music>